Today's Two Minute Tuesday is going to be about Forstner bits. Now, it's normally where we'd run an intro, but my daughter decided to use my computer as a storage bin for her apple juice, so we should have that next week. Now, most woodworkers will start with a spade bit or even this crazy cutter here that looks like a medieval torture device or hole saws, but quickly realize that Forstner bits are the absolute best way to go. So there's three types of Forstner bits and they have to deal with how the edge looks. Uh, this is a sawtooth one. These are these new CMT bits. There is a wavy edged bit and a straight knife edged Forstner bit. I typically use the saw teeth when I get good results. When you look at how a Forstner bit works is it has a cutting edge on the side. Uh, this is a saw tooth Forstner bit, and then it has two cutters in the middle. Let's look at this in slow motion and you can see exactly how this works. Now the edge of the bit is cutting around the rim of the hole. And this is why you get incredibly clean holes compared to other types of hole bits, like the ones I mentioned before. Uh, and then while that is scoring the outside of the hole, the cutter in the middle is acting like a hand plane. You can see in these clips that it's actually creating shavings as it goes around. The interior cutter is at the exact same level as the exterior saw teeth. And when it cuts, it creates that flat bottom. Now, how do you get the best results from a Forstner bit? Well, first and foremost, as I wanted to prove in this slow motion clip, you need a backer board. Whether it's on your drill press or using a hand drill, you really want to clamp something behind. When Forstner bits exit, they have a tendency to create a lot of tear out. And if you're drilling all the way through a piece, you really want a backer board. Let me show you a little trick on how to do it very cleanly if you don't want to use a backer board. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to drill a through hole without a backer board here in a second. Let's go over some tips on how to use a Forstner bit properly. First is this spur in the middle. It's called a spur. It sticks out further than the teeth and it helps you with alignment. So when you find the exact location that you want your hole, use an awl. This is one that I really like using because it has a spring in it, but it doesn't have to be one. And you punch a hole where you want it to be. Now, when you use a Forstner bit, the enemy of of a dull tool is heat. Heat dulls a bit faster than anything and Forstner bits because of the shape and style of the cutter has a tendency to heat up. So you wanna go down and up, down and up. And you wanna make sure you are clearing chips out of the way. They have a tendency to pack chips in. They're designed to shoot chips out the top like you saw in the slow-mo footage here, but they also have a tendency to pack chips in the hole which causes a ton of heat. So. When you create your center punch, you wanna line it up with that and that's gonna line it up and you can hold that down, but right as that spur starts to enter the wood, I kind of loosen my grip and that way if it's off center in any way at all, it's gonna make a micro adjustment on its own and drill. So let me show you what that looks like. So did you see the wood move over slightly there? That's what that did, is it fixed it. Like I just bumped it just a little bit. Now watch the wood move as I enter. Then you... So you can see these chips, they look like they're straight out of a hand plane and that's what a good sharp bit is gonna look like. Um, these are these brand new offerings from CMT. I'm gonna talk about those in a second, but Let's first talk about how to drill a through hole without a backer board. So when I want to drill a through hole without a backer board, now this is something that you will learn by feel. But first I'll just set my drill press so I know the spur is just going to come out and I can tell that's not going to drill into my drill press but will just barely come through the wood. And then I'll start my hole. So you can see here, it created a very clean edge with a very flat bottom, but that spur just goes right through to the other side here. So we know that if we line up that spur again, it's gonna drill in the exact same place. So all you need to do is take your spur and line it up perfectly with that hole. And then as you turn it on, you can leave, leave your board loose. It just goes right through and you get a perfect hole on either side. Now, what is a Forstner bit used for. Now my absolute favorite use for a Forstner bit is when you're making mortises for mortise and tenon. When you clear out that waste, you can find a Forstner bit that is just 
a teeny bit smaller than the square or rectangle that you're trying to cut and drill it out and then it makes it really easy to clear with waste. Forstner bits are great for overlapping holes. They're also great for my Moxon vise. For example, in my Moxon vise template, it's a multi-step Forstner bit operation. So you drill this outside hole first and then you put the insert in and then you use a smaller Forstner bit and drill on both sides and then down the middle. Now, Forstner bits, like I said, are great when they're overlapping. Uh, they're great for creating flat bottoms for dowels. If you have a project that has a dowel that spans from one end to the other, they're great for screw holes. So you can use a Forstner bit, drill down partway through your piece, then use a regular drill bit for your screw, shoot your screw into a project and then cut a plug and fill that plug. In fact, I have some really cool slow motion footage here I'll show you of a plug cutter cutting a plug. Forstner bits are one of the most useful drill bits and obviously for me, it is the one I use most often in my woodworking. So to summarize, Forstner bits are the woodworker's bits and if you're not using them, I think you should. They're high quality, very round holes. I've heard that drill bits don't even make round holes. I don't know if that's a urban myth or not. Comment down below if you know the truth on that, but Forstner bits are the way to go if you're doing quality woodworking. They're great for clearing waste or having finished ready flat bottom or through holes. Now, as far as which ones to use, CMT was so happy with you guys after my saw blade video, I think we sold them out in like 16 hours of blades, that they just released a Forstner bit set uh, that is normally $200. Very high quality set. It's 60 to 62 on the Rockwell hardness scale, which is incredible. That's more than like my buck knife. I mean, that is really good hardness for tool steel. They stay sharp forever. They have a 16 piece set and they're offering Katz Moses viewers another $25 off. So it's only 96 bucks or $6 a bit. They also have them individually. If you follow that link to over to Tay Tools and use the discount code down below, uh, you can pick these up and it's a screaming deal, guys. And don't wait, because you know we always sell Tay Tools out of stuff. Mike, you owe me a steak dinner, by the way. Uh, guys, if you want to support the channel, head over to the Cat's Moses store, pick up an apron, dovetail jigger, stop block, stay safe in the shop, have a wonderful day.